Welcome to the first module on network visualization. My name is Jonathan Morgan, and I am a researcher with Dutes Network Analysis Lab. This module is going to cover network visualization, and we're specifically going to look at network visualization in R. But before we dive into R, I think it's important to go over some basic fundamental concepts to avoid confusion when you try to do some network visualization on your own data. First fundamental concept, what's a network? Or actually, even before what's a network, what's a graph? Because a network is a ki special kind of graph. A graph is a set of vertices with lines between pairs of vertices. And what a network is, is a graph where we add attributes to the graph to make the graph more sensible. And graphs, or networks, have three major components that we need to think about when we visualize them. So we need to think about the vertices or the nodes, we need to think about the lines, and we need to think about the layout. Okay, so first off, we're going to think a little bit about the nodes or the vertices. Networks can vary in various ways, and they can vary with respect to the nodes, the edges, and the layouts that they have. Networks, when it comes to differences in terms of nodes, have two major types. They have unimodal and they have multimodal. Imagine a network between a group of children as friends and basically you're capturing who's friends with who. All the entities in that network are the same type of entity. So they're all children playing with each other or who are friends with each other. In a multimodal network, the nodes can be of different types. So imagine another situation for instance, baseball players connected their baseball team. Um, I have Mickey Mantle on my screen here and Joe DiMaggio. They only played one year at the same time, but they're bound through the Yankees. And so the Yankees is one kind of node, and Joe DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle are another kind of mode. This is also sometimes referred to as a bipartite network. Unimodal networks are simple and can tell us a lot about the world. Multimodal networks are a little more complex, and they require some additional steps that we'll talk about during the course of the video. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is networks can differ in terms of the lines. Undirected networks, the lines are called edges. And they're called edges because we, the directionality is not a salient feature of that network. So for instance, imagine that the network is, again, Joe DiMaggio's connected to Mickey Mantle, through the Yankees, they're both on the team at the same time. The direction of that tie isn't meaningful in that network. So that would be an undirected network and the link between those two entities would be referred to as an edge. In a directed network, the link between them is referred to as an arc. It basically has an arrow. And in these cases, the directionality of the tie, or the, or, and in particular, the reciprocity of the tie is an important feature of the network. So imagine our example with kids uh, playing with other kids and who's friends with who. Well, you can imagine it could be important to look at who nominates who and then who, re who reciprocates that nomination because the kids who reciprocate that nomination, it's much more likely that that friendship is mutually understood as a friendship where in the other case, you know, I nominate, uh, I nominate Jim and sadly, the researchers discovered that Jim didn't nominate me back, and that tells us something else about the world. We can also think of edges in terms of two other important features, whether they're weighted or unweighted. So an unweighted network is sometimes called a dichotomous network or a binary network, and in those networks, basically the edges can take one of two values. There can be no edge, which is a zero, or one, which is an edge. A weighted network is a network where the edge can take an infinite value. It can be 0 to 1, it can be other scales. And the uh, a weighted network provides a little bit more information. It gives us a sense about how strong the tie is. A final little note, when it comes to edges, there is a third kind of edge called a loop. A loop is basically a situation where a person nominates himself as a tie. That's doesn't happen all that often, but sometimes that information can be important. And the way that's represented is literally there's a loop from the tie to itself. So if you see that and you're kind of wondering what's going on with that, that's what that's symbolizing. 
You heard me use the term nominate earlier when I was talking about ties between networks. That's a term that comes out of survey data collection methodology. And the reason why we used uh, nominate is it's a way of reminding us that this information is only from the perspective of the person initiating that tie, right? Or si signifying that there is a tie between me and someone else. So I nominate somebody. That doesn't mean that it's absolutely true in the world. And in fact, that's why we care about things like reciprocated ties and other positional features in the network to really give us a sense of that's really there, really in the world, as opposed to in this person's head. 